I just feel the hero and the shero within us. That presence, that power, that love, that light, that luminosity, that brilliance, that intelligence, that personification of life itself that is through a divine urgency to express itself is coming forth through us right now. And we are here to no longer block it, to no longer hinder it, to no longer obstruct it, deny it, or delay it consciously or unconsciously to inhibit it in any way but to stand fully available to all of life to come through and as us on a regular basis. Thus, our theme of holy, holy agreement with life. Holy, a holy agreement with life. As we have talked about for the last couple of weeks, even with Brother Tete here last week, we're coming to a greater understanding that when we talk about holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, we're talking about utterly and totally with a deep sense of surrendering to life. It's a, it's a holy agreement with life. And when we talk about H-O-L-Y, we're talking about that which is real, that which is exalted, that which is divine. So we're having a holy, holy agreement with life. And when we wake up in that dynamic, we begin to break our unconscious agreements with mediocrity, our unconscious agreements with remaining small, unconscious agreements with just getting by, unconscious agreements with stabilizing ourselves in false security and safety, and instead coming to an understanding that when we're making a holy, a holy agreement with life, we're captured by the urgency of life itself to be more of itself. Life is infinite. Life is God. Life is intelligence. Life is consciousness. Life is, uh, knows itself fully and completely, but here's the deal. Life wants to know itself as you. Life wants to know itself as you individually. Life wants to know itself as you personally. So it's not just everywhere else except where you are. Life wants to come into its own as your very life and being, but you must, you must wake up and have a holy, a holy agreement with life. You must say to yourself on a regular basis, this moment I set myself free to live in the joy and the peace, the harmony, the abundance, the dy dynamic health, wealth, and well-being that has already been given to me. I am not going to go get it. I am going to let it. I'm going to allow it. I'm going to receive it. It's an inner graciousness, meaning that this presence of life has given us everything, but have we become gracious enough to receive it? Have we grown in graciousness to receive it? Or are we combating it away with excuses and otherwise making agreements with limitations, arguing for our limitations, using our excuses and our past to argue for our limitations. Not today. We're standing up as a community and as individuals in this community saying we're making a holy, holy agreement with life, feeling into that deeply. So that we're moving, as the topic would indicate, or the theme. I don't know whether it's a topic or theme. I'm just rolling with it today. No, it's, it's, it's a part of the topic. And that, and that is we're moving from paranoia to pronoia. Paranoia, as you know, is that inner emotional feeling or emotion that something is bad is about to happen. Or something. Somebody is out to get you, or there's some big humanoid God that has wrath for humanity and is going to strike you down if you make a mistake. Oftentimes, people live in this dynamic of paranoia, and they engage all of the emotional memories of things that have happened in their life and forges a, per, a, a perception in which they live in from a sense of paranoia. Something bad's about to happen. Something's out to get me. There's, there's a conspiracy against me. 
There are others trying to do me wrong. There are others talking about me. There are others that don't like me. Everybody is against me. It's, it's, it's paranoia. And it, and it leads to a limited perception of life that hinders the flow of wisdom, hinders the flow of peace, hinders the flow of creativity, hinders the flow of being in our right mind. So we're moving from paranoia to pronoia. Pronoia is that, is that inner feeling that something good's about to happen. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awareness that the universe is on our side. It's an awareness that, that life is on our side. It's an, aware, it's an awareness that there is a conspiracy. There's a divine conspiracy. Everything is working together for our good. Every, it doesn't say everything is good. It says everything is working together for good. Everything not be good to us in a particular moment, but everything is working together for our good. And so we're moving as a species, and we're moving as individuals from paranoia to pronoia. Waking up and saying, oh my God, what good is about to happen today? Waking up to saying in substance, what good is here that I presently cannot see? Waking up on a regular basis and saying, what good is trying to happen that I don't even have a hint of? Now, just asking those kind of questions begins to prepare the mind for looking for the good, moving from paranoia to pronoia, so that we become in flow with life itself. Because life never compromises, contradicts itself, never hinders itself. Life is always life. And you can exchange life, that's a capital L life, you can exchange that with the word God and not a humanoid man in the sky with the beard and striking people and eternal damnation and all of that nonsense of the scrolls of religiosity that we put into museums and say, did that used to really, people used to really believe that nonsense? Yes, baby, people used to really believe that. We've rolled away a lot of that stuff where people used to believe in a human God uh, that struck people and put people in eternal damnation. And we put racism in that mu museum and we put homophobia in that museum. Humanity has unfolded to a whole nother awareness of the presence and the power and the love of unity with God. And we're all one in the spirit of the living God. That's museum pieces. So we're moving into pronoia, and we are embracing the all of us, meaning this. You want to begin to strike the mystic chord of memory and embrace all the aspects of your life where the miraculous showed up, where your surface mind did not know how anything was going to turn out, where your surface mind was at its wit's end where your surface mind had already run the gamut of what it should do. And then suddenly, out of the blue, out of nowhere, out of, uh, you, you, you just gave up. And then suddenly, a miracle occurred. Suddenly, you were still alive. Suddenly, something turned out right. You want to begin to embrace that part of you and begin to feel into that dynamic so that that becomes the bedrock of you moving into pronoia. You want to begin to embrace that part of you, not as the exception, but as the exceptional aspect of yourself that becomes the new norm for your life. This is spiritual practice, by the way, because your surface mind is going to make excuses and give you doubts and worries and fears and begin to move through all of the things that have ever happened to you bad and you're going to begin to allow that to be the, the emotional contagion that spreads to the surface mind that comes out of your mouth as excuses. No! Stop it! You're going to embrace all of the areas of your life where a miracle has taken place and you're going to embrace that and realize that is you. Remember, you're the substance of reality. You are God becoming conscious of itself as your very life and being. So the joy, the peace, the wisdom, the harmony, the intelligence, the love, the abundance, all of that is your life. So when you embrace those particular moments where you were at your wit's end and the miraculous came into manifestation as an idea, as a feeling tone, as wisdom, as guidance, as safety, etc., that was God personifying itself as you you are going to embrace that as you.
And then, here's the big one, if we can say big and small. The areas and times in your life where there was trauma, where something bad happened, at that particular moment, a split occurred, a part of you split off and became a, almost an appearance of a separate identity. And this particular part of you this, that, that split off, whenever something that's about to happen in your life that's dramatic, it sounds the alarm. Something bad's about to happen. It sounds the alarm. I got to fight. It sounds the alarm. I got to protect myself. It sounds the alarm. I got to defend myself. What you want to do is you have to embrace that part. This, you can only do this if you're practicing meditation, by the way. This is not a mental exercise. It's almost impossible for your surface mind to embrace this mentally or emotionally. This happens in your prayer and in your meditation. You have to stop and you have to embrace that part of yourself and you have to say, you are me, come home. You are me, come back home. Come back home to me so that there be a transmutation of the part that split off and a redemption of the energy. The in redeem. Redemption means that energy that is split off and is running its own life. Oh my God, something bad's about to happen. Oh my God, I gotta fight. Oh my God, I gotta protect myself. Oh my God, something bad's about to happen. Because of the trauma, you have to become bigger than it only in meditation. This happens. <clears throat> you can't will this, you can be willing. You say to it, come home. You are me. Come home. You are me. And as you begin to hold that space, then the part that's sounding the alarm, I got to fight. I got to be right. Great redemption begins to happen. The part that has split off starts to be redeemed, the energy starts to be transmuted, and you start to bring yourself back. You, you don't pretend it's not there. You don't supplement it. You don't drug it away. You don't drink it away. You say, come home. And so if you combine the memory, the mystic cord of memory of the moments of the miraculous. It's interesting. When you're in those moments of miraculous, you want to smile. I was reading a research project that says that women smile 62 times a day. Men smile eight. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> now, I'm not saying, may, perhaps in the metaphysical community, men probably smile a little bit more than the average man out there. Women, on the average, smile 62 times a day. On the average, men smile eight times a day. Maybe that's why women live a little bit longer. I don't know. They're smiling and they're activating their, their immune system and, and they're, 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 they're allowing the, the bloodstream to flow better and they're releasing toxins better. So when you're embracing that aspect of yourself that's remembering the miraculous, put a smile on your face. Men and women and they and them, however you want to identify yourself. So you're combining these two spiritual practices. You're embracing yourself. You're embracing the miraculous or those moments of expansion. And then you're embracing the part that is split off through trauma and drama. And it's running its own emotional territory, staking that territory with fight and flight and protection and defense and being right. And you're able to look at it and say, come home. You are me. So then what begins to happen? We begin to be not paranoid. We begin to be pronoia beings. We begin to walk in a vibrational feeling tone. Feeling tone. If every single thing is working together for my good, there is a divine conspiracy happening even if my eyes can't see it, even if I can't feel it yet. Something is about to happen. 
And then my agreement with life. Holy, holy agreement. Holy, holy agreement with life. Life says, go forth and multiply. Life says, go forth and allow for your being to be new territory for growth, development, and unfoldment. Life is saying, I have given you everything. What are you going to do with it? Life is saying, you have everything. Act like it. That came to me in a vision recently. It said, you have everything. Act like it. That's what it, that's what it said in the vision process. I had with the, the board of trustees the last couple of days ago. The vision said, you have everything. Why don't you act like it? We have everything. Why don't we act like it? Why don't we walk with our back straight? Why don't we have a smile on our face at least 62 times a day? Why don't we act like it? Why don't we good, have good posture? That's so we have our, we practice yoga, we have asana, good posture. It puts us in a state of consciousness. Why don't we act like we have everything? Why don't we come into a state and, and vibrationally get into good inner posture? And I, as I think about inner posture, I think about a number of years ago when I had a spiritual awakening and I was stabbed in the heart. And for a period of time, I had heart pains a lot to the point where I would go, I would go to the doctor and they never found anything wrong with me. And uh, eventually I went to an energetic uh, balancer and uh, he did some work on me and saw that... Uh, the energy was getting stuck around my heart chakra. And so whenever a burst of energy uh, would start to flow up my spine, or if I had a, another insight, another revelation, this energy would rise up, and I, then I'd have tremendous pain. And anyway, he, he unlocked it, and he showed me some exercises to do to unlock it, and it, shoo, it burst up. And he said, oh, you've had bad inner posture. You know, I used to walk like this. I used to walk around. I used to have my hand over my heart all the time. And, um, and then as, as, as I was able to, to breathe and release this energy flowing through me, my inner posture became better. And the energy could flow better. We want to have good inner posture. We have everything. Let us stand and act like it. Let's put a smile on our face. Let us move into a state vibrational state and then that state precludes a stage a st we begin to come to another stage of our unfolding remember if we're not changing or transforming we're not in the game we are here to change we are here to transform we don't want to have the same complaint today that we had when we were 13 when we were 15 when we were 18 when we were 26 we want to change we want to transform. We have everything. Why don't we act like it? Let's have a holy, holy agreement. Embrace all of you. Embrace the miraculous. Vibrate with that. Embrace the trauma points and call them home. Those parts that have split off. You or me, come home. Keep saying that you or me, come home, come home, come home, come home. Transmute, redeem, prayer, meditation, prayer, meditation. Not escaping, prayer, meditation. Not trying to change the external circumstance, prayer, meditation. Not running from, you or me, redemption. You or me, transmutation. I'm bigger, you or me. I have everything, exact like it. 62 times a day. Women have the men beat on this one. 62 times a day. Not all men. And this is, you know, I don't know who they were studying, but. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take a breath here. Release. Take a holy, holy breath. Release. 
remember a moment where you didn't know how a certain circumstance was going to turn out in your life. And the part that it split off under some previous trauma in your life had you paranoid, had you thinking about worst case scenarios, what could possibly go wrong. But grace took over, either through you got so tired or you entered into a moment of prayer or someone prayed for you, and then incrementally and suddenly, phew, it wasn't as bad as you thought. It turned out okay. You were safe. You were all right. Now embrace that moment and give permission for that moment, have an agreement that that moment is a dimension of the real you coming forward. It was not merely an external force. It was actually a condition was created for you to emerge. The real you that carried grace and wisdom, transformational knowledge, intelligence, love, and maybe your surface mind went, shoo, I'm glad that's over. But inside, it was you. Embrace that this is you. Now take another breath, deep breath. And become aware of any moment of split. Any moment of a part of you that split off when something so-called bad happened in your life. And that energy forged its own identity. And it serves whenever something serious appears to be happening in your life. And it's, it sounds the emotional alarm. I gotta defend myself. I gotta fight. I gotta run. I gotta be right. Oh my God, something bad's about to happen. Just look at that part. It's split off. It has its own identity. It's running its own racket. Take a deep breath. Expand your awareness. Embrace that part of you. Just embrace it. Don't drink it away. Don't drug it away. Don't pretend it away. Embrace it, embrace it, it's you, it's you. And say, you are me, come home. You are me, come home, come back home. Transmutation is taking place. Redemption is happening. It's split off to defend and protect we're just coming back home now. So that you can have a holy, holy agreement with life and move from paranoia to pronoia. Oh my God. Oh my God, something, something wonderful is trying to happen. Something good is trying to happen. I feel it in my bones. I'm Embracing all the parts of me. Something good is trying to happen. Something beautiful is trying to Oh, it's happening. Something wonderful is happening. I can't even see it yet. It's eyes have not seen nor, nor ears heard. Nor has entered into the heart of each and every individual who loves God and lives according to their divine purpose, it's beyond our imaginal realm. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Oh, I feel it in my bones. I agree. I'm not inhibiting. 
I'm not excusing, I'm not blocking it. Let it reign supreme in my life. I'm no longer afraid of being brilliant and shining and glowing. I'm no longer afraid of being crucified or burned at the stake because of the brilliance. I'm no longer afraid of being criticized for being different and magnificent. I'm all right with it. I'm pro noia. God is for me. I am for God. Feel it in your being. You're moving from paranoia to pronoia. Embracing the divine conspiracy. Life is for itself. And we are the individualized expressions of life. As you put your arms around yourself, you're embracing every aspect of yourself. The part that you think is miraculous, but you, you put outside of yourself as something foreign that came in. The parts of yourself that split off because of trauma, that sometimes run your emotional life, you're embracing it all. Embracing the miraculous as an emergence of your real life, embracing the drama, saying, come home, you are me. The grand redemption is taking place. It's a homecoming. No more splits. All one. Come. We're ready. We're available. It's all right to be all right. It's all right to be healthy. It's all right to be in joy. It's all right to be in peace. It's all right to embrace the all of us without judgment. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Now as women do, because they lead the pack in this, you can put a smile on your face. You can put a smile on your face and let the tonic chemicals flow. Let the coherence of the brain happen. Let the immune system become stronger. Let the aging slow down because you've got good work to do. And your energy does not always need to be in using it for repairing. It can now be used for creativity and loving and giving and sharing and shining. So it is from this state that we enter boldly into prayer now. And I say boldly because we enter into prayer not to change other people, not to merely change a circumstance or a condition, but we enter into prayer that we may be changed by the prayer. That our perception, our point of view, our positionality may go from dualism and separation to oneness. We enter into this prayerful moment with a, a burst of thanksgiving, a burst of gratitude, a burst of appreciation, a burst of enthusiasm. Oh, my God, life is good. Life is for me. I'm so grateful I am alive. I'm so grateful that I exist. Oh, I thank God within that I exist. I'm grateful. And from this consciousness of gratitude, it creates in me a new attitude. 
And I begin to see as I am seen by the presence. States from the Holy Writ, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the presence of God. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God is saying, I, I, know, I know what I created. I know my thoughts that I think toward you and thoughts of peace. I know the end result. I know this perfect spiritual idea. I know the destiny. We give ourselves permission in this grand gratitude to see ourselves as we are seen. We embrace all of us. In this moment of gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation, with the pure sense of unity with the presence, I am what thou art and thou art what I am. No distance, no separation, no otherness, no other power, no other place. Only here, only now, God only, only God. Life for us. That's our agreement. It is from awareness that I speak the word for each and every one of us, knowing there's only one of us here, that life is having its way with us today. We are pro noia. So we embrace not only the possibility, but the activation of divine health in every area of our lives, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. Our relations shut through with eternity. We embrace that life is for us and that there is flying on the wings of the whole Spirit of God. Creativity, generosity, loving. Oh, we're making love popular again. It sometimes goes in and out of style. Just check the internet. Sometimes you see the immature aspect of our community just raging against each other. Little kids in the sandbox. Me, me, my, mine. I'm right, you're wrong. Sometimes love is in and out of popularity, but we're standing in an awareness of being lovers of God and lovers of humanity. And as Yeshua ben Joseph, we love and embrace the, even the least of us, meaning even the immature in our spiritual family on the, on the planet, even those that have popped out of loving and are into righteousness, self-righteousness. We love them, we love them, we love them. So we step into this awareness, and as I am speaking the word for each and every one of us, we become the living tuning forks of infinite good. So even sometimes without saying one single word, without singing one song, without doing one affirmation, we carry the frequency of the Most High. And everywhere we go, there is a, an aroma, a feeling tone, a vibration of peace and of loving that emanates through us. And people just unconsciously start to vibrate at that level. Agape, we call that being a beneficial presence. Not a do-gooder, but a beneficial presence. Feel into the vibration right now of all of your needs being met. Even if your eyes can't see it right now, I mean, your eyes will run towards all the places where there is scarcity or lack of limitation or issues in your life. We're not denying that. But now feel. Just, just give yourself permission to feel into all of your needs being met. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to have all your needs met? What does it feel like to be totally supported by a friendly, progressive universe? What does it feel like to be cradled in love? You can feel that right now. You can feel that right now. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to be matched by fact. 
It's going to be matched by circumstance. You can't have the circumstance first and then get the love and the peace and the harmony and the abundance. No. Inside out, not outside in. Feel your need met. Feel the love. Feel the peace. Feel the joy now. You've had moments of it. Feel it now. And then it'll be matched. The facts like filings around a magnet will start to coagulate around you. Oh, I, oh I'm loved. Oh, I'm supported. Oh, my needs are met. Oh, where did that happen? It happened inside of you first. Don't demand from the universe what you got to demand from yourself. The universe has already given it. So the word is spoken. We feel it in our bones. And now I want you to just go into a deep feeling tone. Feel. Just feel this. As I walk to get the prayer list, feel this. Help them feel it. Jason. Nina. Did you know true love has for nothing? Oh, her acceptance is the way we pay. Did you know that life has given love a guarantee to last through forever and another day? But tomorrow oh, could make me the past, but that I mustn't fear. No, I know deep in my mind, love of me, I left behind. God is loving you. presence of God is never an absence and God is love so God is loving us always